species of olive. Interesting. That uh, has a lot of ramification versus like this other type of olive, the like the classical, like I make fruit. So you can see much smaller leaves, tiny inner nodes propagate that stuff. That's the stuff you want to propagate. So you've been you've been collecting all that, cutting them up, making babies, making little cuttings. And then in through here is, yeah, this is like the tropicals, all of the... It's my favorite kind of area. I'm a big tropical fan. Repotted stuff goes in here for a while. And then as it starts to show vigor and signs of health, I'll you know, move it into the shade area. Caretaker for the Texas State Bones exhibit. So that one was actually, I'm facilitating a donation from one of my friends who wanted to give that to the TTSBE to the exhibit. Wow. So that's part of that's part of the exhibit's collection now. This is really cool bonsai. Thank you. Willow leaf ficus here. Wow. trees this is a really cool monster one. yeah <laughs> those roots you could chop it right there plant all that that's that's the start of a tree right there <laughs> sure is guarantee that's gonna pop no problem yeah we'll need some scissors I'll do that ficus man they're just you can you just put a little bit of inside water it grows it's, it's an amazing species yeah and the micro holes in that really add to the scale super old mm-hmm yeah, like these two were uh, Root Over Rocks from Timmy and Nan, two were club members. And he just helped some people out. They're like, we need help moving, help them move. They needed trees stored at a spot. I held their trees for like three three months or so, did some repot, did some work on it. At the end of that, they were like, thank you so much. Here are our trees. They gave me gifts. That second greenhouse that we were looking at, that was also from them as they moved. Wow. And just help people out and just, just works out, you know? That's another uh, moral of the story, you know, join the club that you're nearby and help out. Make Be friends. happy to help. Don't do it because you think you're going to get a greenhouse, you know. Right? <laughs> Not my plan. But... You know, be, be stoked that you're helping them out because you're, what you're getting is, uh, you're, you're getting some knowledge imparted, you know. And I'm, I pick up something all the time when I'm with you, so thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for the knowledge you impart. Oh, that's cool. What is this little thing? Accent plants, dude, they go hand in hand with bonsai. And not only that, you know, you put them in little beautiful containers as well. Make that a sweet old accent plant right there. Yeah, you put it into a little container. I mean, I wouldn't do that now, but like yeah. next time you pot it, put it in a little container and they'll just fill it up with all those little bulbs. That's so great. Leopard plants. Thank you. Okay, why don't you show us your tree? Do you have one too? Oh, well. Okay, you, children tour time. You, you gotta show us your tree too. Go show us your tree. We're gonna go to, we're gonna look at your trees right now. <laughs> Okay, what do we have here? So say hi. I'll hold it up for you. Tell them your name. Hi, my name's Camden and I'm nine. <laughs> hi, I, my name is Bexie and I'm 
five. Hi, hi, hi. I'm Jade. I'm Liz. Liz. I'm Jade. Wow, that's a mature two-year-old, I tell you what. What kind of tree is this? An uh, oak. An oak. And where did you get it? I found it out. I did it up with my daddy. You dug it up from the ground? Yep. And then you put it inside this soil? And now it's growing. That's a bonsai. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're gonna repot it next year. Did we collect it this year? It's from last year. From last wow. year. Yeah. So it's just it's a probably got year. it's probably got tons of roots in here ready to get worked on and ebby hard, huh? <laughs> oh. Look oh. at that thing. Uh, yeah. What That's kind it. of tree is that? I think it's an ash juniper. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And did you dig this out yourself? Yeah, I dug it out with Daddy O a few years ago. Daddy O. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, we repotted it this year into mm -hmm. a little crystal. Container. Have you named it anything? No, I haven't named it. <laughs> it's a beautiful tree. Mm -hmm. What kind of soil do you have in it? Betty, what type of soil do I have in it? It's the aoki. Aoki soil. That's right. Akadama. <laughs> yep, it's got Akadama, Akadama in there. Akadama, I can see some pumice in there, or lava rock rather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you for showing me that. You're welcome. It's a beautiful. <laughs> Seedling, did we talk about this one? <laughs> not yet, no, not, tell me a, not a today. Lot of, tell me, you know, some about this one. This is a... This is a special one for me. The container alone is impressive, you know? And the material in there has to match the impressive size of the container. This is probably like my prime example of Juniperus pinchodi, Texas redberry. This is something I dug up about three years ago. We put it into a box. It sat in the box for a full year. And then I took it out to Bjorn's to get styled last November. So we styled it out. This is the front from this perspective. And upon it getting styled, it showed like good signs of health. So we potted it out of the box and put it into this rather large you know, rectangular uh, unglazed bonsai pot. Then you fell over in the pot. Sure did. But yeah, this is this is a classic. It's crazy, man. Classic juniper pinchota. I dug it up by myself. I basically like took the whole thing and like put it in the back of my four-door car. And it just like it was just happy as I'll get out. I got a nice dense root ball like underneath the core of the trunk, so it just it goes all the way to the very edge over here from a root so there's this root that taps into the to the wow. core and then you know it fits all the way to this side over here it has like a little tail that's hanging out in the back so it uh it's it goes yeah end to end wow that's a ficus benjamina i think and tell us about that one over. i made this pot you made that pot i did how did you make it i made this pot with clay how did we turn it from clay into a hard container? We fired it. Oh, we had to make it go on fire? <laughs> <laughs> it was on fire? No. no. We made it really hot and made oh, it hard. Oh, you cooked it with fire. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. That's cool. Yep, and then we've just kind of like kept uh, kept it getting repotted. A giant tree. <laughs> it's got like a cut in there because that root just like grows out of it and then we just repot it and cut it back again. How cool is that? So we that? need to go take it that way today since it keeps getting knocked over and up pot it. Yeah. Time to up pot it, give it some room to grow. Yes, it is. Yeah, Maybe give it a good old chunk, uh, trunk, trunk chop? Yeah, what do you think, trunk? cutting cutting it back? Or letting there. It, yeah, or letting it grow tall. I like it tall. Okay, it's your world. <laughs> Sounds good, thanks for showing us. Thank you so much. Kids are great. Have a lot oh, of fun with it. Oh, is this the? Um, it's a quince. It looks like. Yeah, it's a Texas native. It's that scarlet quince, right? Texas native quince. Wow. Now, mine does not look like this, but that's cool, dude. The flowers on them are just incredible. I've seen some variations with like this kind of marooner flower, like more darker red, and then I've seen some with the scarlet, like the super vibrant red, almost like a pink. Yeah, that one's that one's older. 
I got it from one of my club members, Timmy and Nan, actually. Have you done any work to it, or has it just kind of been chilling in the pot here? I just cut it back, I'll pot it into a larger container for health. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna repot it into like a bonsai pot next season. much of that root is exposed and then also had to figure out how to elevate it so I set these rocks as kind of like where it's sitting on those rocks and then basically built slab walls around it. What do you do about watering in this place? When, how do you, how can you get away from this place for a day? Uh, I have friends. Okay. I've got friends <laughs> in low places. Yeah, I got I got a, a couple of people who are willing to come by and, and water. Treat enough people to come by and water? Yes, exactly. Do it's you have community. any treated water or is this uh, good old fashioned Austin hard water? Austin hard water. Okay. I was thinking when I saw those satellite dishes, I'd be like, it'd be funny if you had a satellite dish turned into a bonsai slab. And I look over here and there it is. <laughs> that's too funny. Yeah, that's my, that's my nod to Nick Lenz. To Nick Lenz? Yeah, Nick Lenz. Nick Lenz is a bonsai artist. He just died. So yeah, he's, but he's really inspirational in the fact that like Nick, explored the avant-garde, if you will. It was like out there on the eccentric areas of it. Highly technical, sk technically skilled, so very much like strong bonsai execution. But he would plant stuff on statues and in vacuum cleaners with like little like landscapes with army tanks on it, trying to reenact <laughs> like World War II. Just I love like, that kind of stuff. Yes, exactly. So that's my, that's like the least that I could do was like come up with something that's out of this world. So making a <laughs> making a satellite post post apocalyptic right. So I potted a Chinese elm forest in there. It's due for its next level of, of uh, styling and cutback. So it's been in there for at least a year. And then I have more satellite dishes because I like this concept. I was wondering why you <laughs> had so many satellite dishes. I found the answer. Yeah, I'm working on a, a custom style. Well, you got us signature. cut off over here. You guys saw it first. It's crazy. This is one of those elms from Lena that turned out really nice. It's kind of just like a hit gem in the rough. Wow. Impressive. Just like a little clumper. <laughs> How great is that? And that container is really nice too. Yeah, it goes all the way to the end. Yeah. So I really like maximizing the containers. But yeah, this container is super sweet. It, it, it's like an old Japanese. Old Japanese. I don't know, tokonomi is what it was told to me, but I don't know if that's the truth or not. Yeah, I thought those were unglazed pots. That's what I was, I think it's a region. Tokonomi is like a region. Uh, so it's not like a specific one. Right, that's person. right. As long as it's made in tokonomi. Right. That's not an actual champagne. It wasn't from the champagne region of France. It's champagne, no. It's not champagne. Now that's nicer right there. I really like this elm. This is like second 
second to that blue one that we were looking at earlier. It's also from, from Lano. Yeah, it looks just like it's from uh, in that area. Woo! <laughs> well, lost it. It's in a Thor hole via I container. I say, that looks like one of those Thor pots I've seen. You know it, I love Thor. Way to go, Thor! Make more containers. <laughs> we'll use them. Make more, we'll use them. If you make them, we will use them. Uh, let's check out these, uh, these olives over here. Just carving everywhere. Yeah, it's probably, I'm working on my carving a little bit. Becoming a carving artist. Yeah, I'm working on it. Tried to make some exposed root black pines. So just experimenting with different things. Lots of pines in here. Exposed like root the is hard. Experimentation going on here. Wow. Yeah, they're they're at least healthy. <laughs> These are from seed, I assume, or something. Yep. Yep, find some seed. Humble beginnings right here. Yeah, you put a little Before bend in them. Into like that. And then it'll drop into that. And then uh, the next stage. And then like that. And then into that. <laughs> then they ramify. Pines are, pines are wicked cool. They are. Um, they, they, they're intimidating to like try to get something like that from something like this. You know, it's where do they begin? But they, they truly take years and years. They're not, you won't get instant gratification out of those things. See, yeah, olives. I'll put this up here. I met someone. I made a friend. And that friend had olives from California. And that friend is also moving from Colorado to Kentucky. So I helped him with the move. And part of that involved sheltering and storing a lot of his olive trees in Texas. So I moved them from Colorado to Texas. These are orchard olives from like California, like oh, an old so California. They just grow in an orchard over there, mm -hmm. and they're there for years, just yep. being used to make olives. Olives, yep. And at a certain point, they'll stop yielding fruit production, so then they're of no benefit to the orchard because it's like, hey, we're trying to grow olives in this old, dilapidated tree that's got all this dead damage on it. It's not helpful. So the friend that I'm describing like started making relationships and was basically like, hey, can I have that thing? I'll pay you dollars for it. And they said, sure. And then he collected them 15, 20 years ago. So crazy. And they look like this. So they look like that when you get them, essentially. Well, actually they won't have any branching on it. Uh, they'll basically be fully buried. And then as branching starts pushing out, you'll like lower the soil line to where then you're exposed. So is this actually like the roots? The root stock at some point? Or some of it's just... probably root. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and some of it's like trunk that's like carved up. So I bet you like maybe like where this curves was maybe like a root, you know, like this probably tapped in as a root. And then that may have been part of the trunk line as a potential. It's so crazy. And yeah, you probably, I guess we really only get this type of olive for the carving projects really, right? Yeah, exactly. All that rad deadwood, like specifically. You know, some of these, like, this crazy barking in here, and then some of these, like, fissures of deadwood that run through here. Impossible to create this, uh, aside from the test of time and nature, Mother Nature doing the work. But part of that process does involve cutting them up, so you end up with these big flat cuts here, and as you can see, you know, even this time, he tried to cut, didn't work, came back. Come back up here. <laughs> tried again, yeah. So a lot of effort went into that. And so essentially like what you do is carve it. So like this whole face here was one flat cut and I, I carved all that on my own. How do you decide where to go in and make peaks and valleys and something like that? You just sort of let it flow? You just follow the, yeah, follow the taper. So, right, you still want to maintain taper to where it's wider and, and thinner. Sure. So you find taper and then wherever it's like really boring, you just create more interest. So like it was, I mean, you can almost see where that flat surface was, Close. but you want to yeah, erode that ability to like really delineate where it was flat because it was you know, flat here. So you add depth to kind of just break up the straight Any lines. Flat spots you see, you got to do something to it, I'm sure. It's also the three dimensionality. So yeah, exactly what you're saying. So you just kind of added some depth in here add some depth over there. Would you treat this with like a lime sulfur to get it real nice and white, bleached? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't done that for this one yet, but it's definitely on the agenda.
<laughs> so this is okay. uh, Vince Sulford? Yeah, yeah, so this is one that I'm kind of using as an example because it's got lime sulfur, it's got natural deadwood, it's got natural bark, and then it's got flame char. So you can see that spectrum in the back here. Like it's been like struck by lightning or something. Yeah, in the back we did the flame char on it, so that's what the flame char looks like. Then you have that natural bark up in this region. You have the natural deadwood up in this region. And then you can see like where I lime sulfur this vein over here. I opted to not lime sulfur this like little enclave. Which is a good idea because I think that really adds, it uh, makes it deeper looking too. Mm -hmm. Because it's not all white in there. You gotta yeah. have that dark to separate the white. That's exactly. brilliant, brilliant idea. But you can see, like I haven't lime sulfur any of this one and I'm not sure I will. Just because there's not any like fresh carving on there. I just like the, all the natural tones and gradients and don't want to dilute it. I like this, it's getting all ramified over here real nicely. Yeah, this is Are very... you chopping the leaves in half on purpose? Is that something you're doing? Yeah, all is respond really well towards defoliation, like full on defoliation. Uh, it'll actually stimulate and spur uh, like a push of growth. Wow. So okay, you can cool. trigger and like, oh man, these things are like supposed to be living in Austin, Texas as bonsai. Because like right about now, which is what we're going to do on the big one, defoliate all of it, style it out, do the root work all in one go. Let it sit, it'll push out new growth, chop that back, push out a third set of growth, and you're like looking at like maybe June, July. Really? And you're like, do we want to do we want to go for a fourth degree of ramification? Yes, we do. Cut it back again. It's that vigorous. They're super vigorous. I have no idea. They love the basically March, May, or March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Huge it's like eight season. months worth of growth season on these things. Four defoliations, maybe more? Yes, exactly. I really like this one. It came together nicely. It's like Zalkova, uh, Zalkova yeah. And I, and I really, really started trying to infuse like this rocky landscape for this one. Yeah, so it's super strange, cool kind of zany. That? want to hang out right inside of there. <laughs> oh yeah, and those kids, the kiddos put like little uh, magical baubles and stuff. <laughs> They'll like bless my trees. They'll be like, you get a magical bobble, you get a magical bobble. To yeah. help encourage the I've growth. I've got a couple of these back home. Not as wide or big, but it looks like that's that Leno. Oh, it sure is. There. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, so these olives, they are monsters. Uh, I'm really, really fond of this one. Uh, it's on like a, a couple of different slabs. It also has multiple fronts. So um, what I can say, these olives are wild, right? First of all, uh, I've been able to cut off pieces, cut off chunks, like like a slab of meat, and then it'll like repopulate from there. Get out of town, really? I can, I can definitely show you an example, but these two are actually uh, combined and connected. And what I, after studying them for a while, I realized that there was only three points that they that they touched. So one of them was right here, one of them was right here, and there was another point like right here that essentially connected these. So after studying them, I like did a small incision here, a small um, angular cut over this spot and cut all three nodes. And then I was able to take these apexes and like rip it open and man, the, like the energy surge that I like felt, like I emotionally felt this huge surge of energy whenever I really? did the crack, like whenever I cracked these things apart, this split naturally, and I was just like, I could just feel this surge of energy. But essentially I repotted it, but now we have two super rad olives. Was the bottom of that in soil and had it its own roots as well? Yeah, this fit in here like this. So you literally, yeah, chopped like, well, you said it was only connected at those three points, but yeah, so you're thinking you can just like probably do that and this will be its own little guy. Oh, absolutely. If you wanted to cut from there to there. Yep, you could, you could cut this and then remove all the things that went with that and make so its own tree out of it. And you can see those three spots on here. Yeah. Here's one of them, here's that wedge cut that I did, and then here's the third one. So just one, two, three. You know, for a second I thought you were you're gonna tell me you can like cut off this part. 
Oh no, it has to have living the living vein on it, right? But to your to your question, right? You could like cut through here and then take that little chunk off and make an olive out of that. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Wow. It's fascinating. And you have one in the ground, right? Is this what I'm seeing back here? Yeah, we're ground growing that one just to see how they do in the ground. Yeah, look at this. I was like, wait, that one doesn't have like, a container. Yeah, they, they hulk out pretty quick. So you were just like, hey, I got all these. Let's just throw one of them in the ground. Let's see what happens. And you see, look at that. It's a vigorous growth on it. It's growing way faster than the other ones, for sure, as far as the, figure, like, huh? the, the thickness of the branching. And these are all, I mean, I guess they were all, did you acquire them around the same time as well? Mm -hmm. That's awesome, yeah. Well, as you can see, grow, ground growing is the way to go if you want to get you know, thickness, quickness. Exactly. Quickness in your thickness. Throw it <laughs> in the ground. We'll make a shirt that says that. <laughs> you know it. That's great. I'll turn this one around so you can see the front. This is cool from all angles. Brandon, thank you very much for having us out to your garden. Anytime. It's inspi inspiring to see such a huge garden, and I hope you all picked up some inspiration as well. We'll be back to check out some more of the stuff, yeah. more demos coming up from Brandon himself. So in the meantime, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon to make sure you're notified every time we're live, we're dropping a new video. Be cool, stay hip, get yourself a hobby. See you next time. Bye. Bonsai, yeah! Bonsai, yeah!